I was talking to one of the smartest people I know uh, yesterday, Nick Colas, who I know you know well. Yes. And, you know, the, the, the main thing to keep in mind here is we have never had an inflation spike that was cured by anything other than a recession. Not all recessions have, have been caused by inflation, of course, but any time we've had a 5% plus spike in inflation um, of any duration, uh, the, the answer has been a, a recession. So, and, and I said this on the air, and I, you know, I bra I'm brawling with people, and nobody wants to hear it, and I know it gets repetitive, um, but we have 11 instances of that. So you want to roll the dice? You want to say this is the one that goes differently? I, I don't think that anyone should be doing that. So uh, it's not fun to be bearish. It's not fun to be negative or pessimistic, other than if you understand that the carnage of today is planting the seeds of expected returns tomorrow. And as markets fall, two things uh, should, everyone should be reminded of two things about bear markets. The first thing is they end all the time, every single one of them. The second thing, more interestingly, is that as stocks fall, expected returns go up. So the money that you're putting into the market today, it's the most uncomfortable investment that you could make, 401k or otherwise. Any contribution you're making, you literally feel like you're, you're throwing money into a, into a wood chipper. You're not. You just might have to be patient before you see that pay off. Um, but there's never been a, a, a market like this that wasn't viable. The real question is, what can you live with? Are you investing the right amount of money based on your own risk tolerance and your own financial situation? If, if, if you're not over-investing and you're not using leverage and you don't have ludicrous expectations about overnight gains and you're, you're investing in a diversified portfolio, it could suck for another six months. It's entirely feasible. But that's not why we're doing this. We're not, we're not doing this so that we can have a party in March based on what, what the returns are from October. If that's what you're doing, you're playing a different game than most, most Americans trying to save for retirement. Right. And, um, you know, we are seeing, as we talked about in the last hour, uh, a lot of the things, you know, this, this, these things go in, in waves. There's a sequence to uh, how bear markets unfold. And part of it, eventually, is the stuff that people thought could keep them out of trouble starts to feel like it's getting into trouble, whether it's the big yep. NASDAQ bellwethers or whether it's the stuff that's supposed to be, you know, kind of safe. So that seems to be like it's coming around. And even on a more fundamental basis, I mean, FedEx, it's a quirky situation. The thing, the stock was really hit tremendously hard before we got these reports today of an incremental warning. It ended up down half a percent today, right? So uh, it's, it's a dynamic system. Some stuff's been priced in, maybe not all of it. Uh, and, and I guess the question is, uh, do you want to just sort of wait until it's more comfortable uh, or do you want to brace for, listen, the overshoots happen on the downside in, in a bear market typically? Yeah, so I think you want to stick, if, if you have a strategy or, or, um, or, or a, multi, a multitude of strategies in a portfolio, two, three, four different things, what you don't want to do here is start to violate the rules based on your gut instinct. So the tactical strategy that we manage for clients is technical. It's, it's trying to be long in uptrends, um, in, in neutral trends. It's trying not to chop itself up and, and churn itself up. And in downtrends, it's just out. Um, as, as badly as I want to say, this is it. This is where we buy them. That's not how it works. That's not the rules. But I do think a barbell approach, Michael, is probably the best approach for most investors. By barbell, I mean... Try to find places to go that have held up the best because that's probably where the fresh capital is going to be chasing returns and coming in if and when this turns around. But then also buy some of the hardest hit stuff you can find because that's where the opportunities could be greatest. So if you're doing that, then you're not betting on just strength or just catching falling knives. You're being rational, and, you're, and, you're, and I think you're putting yourself in a position to benefit from a multitude of scenarios. So really quickly, what's working? The ITA is something that I own, bought it earlier this year. It's one of the few things I own that's working well. It's defense stocks. Look at those stocks today. Some of them are actually green. Um, this is an area that is the second best performing after energy this year. Almost nobody is talking about any of these names. And there's so much geopolitical stuff going on right now. These stocks remain bid. I like that approach. I'm in IEO, which is energy also. Then on the weak side, I bought semiconductors recently. I wish I waited until today. 
Um, but like that's an area that there's been so much pain there already, right? Um, that I think if and when there is a turn of the market, there is going to be a lot of money made there. So doing that barbell approach is probably better than uh, trying to buy a lottery ticket or like hit the jackpot on one specific trade.